Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer or reflection as we remember those who have passed in our community over the, over the past week. Also, please keep in your thoughts and prayers the victims of the tragedy in Boston, and also Eli Cross, father of Gerald Cross, who is the executive director of the Pennsylvania Economy League. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscom? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A. City of Scranton 2012 audit status update dated April 11th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, agenda for the zoning hearing board meeting held on Wednesday, April 10th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, applications along with decisions rendered by the zoning hearing board from the meeting held on Wednesday, April 10th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, tax assessor's report for hearing date held on March 27th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, tax assessor's report for hearing date to be held on May 1st, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, Lackawanna County Planning Commission Subdivision and Land Development Evaluation dated April 11, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3G, breakdown of the eligible salaries for the liquid fuels account for the months of January, February, and March 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? I yes. have one. Oh. That's it. Okay. St. Joseph's Malachite Catholic Church, located at 130 North St. Francis Cabrini Avenue in West Granton, will hold its annual breakfast fundraiser this coming Sunday, April 21st, from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at the door. Adult tickets cost $7.50 each, and tickets for children under the age of 10 cost $4 each. Anyone else? Yes, uh, I have a couple here. Uh, there will be a fundraiser to benefit the United Neighborhood Centers of Northeast PA. It's entitled Beatles, Burgers, and Brew, and it's to be held at the uh, Morgan's Pub and Eatery, 315 Greenridge Street. Uh, that will be Tuesday, April 23rd, from 5 to 8 p.m., Tickets are $20 per person. Uh, burgers, veggie burgers, hot dogs, and draft beer included with ticket from 6 till 8 p.m. That's, again, that's Tuesday, April 23rd from 5 till 8. Uh, the West Side Falcons are announcing their sign-ups for, uh, for their players. Uh, they're the Pennsylvania NFPA 2012 Organization of the Year. 2012 ANC Team Pennsylvania State and NAJFL Super Bowl Champions, and a 2012 AB and C Team National Championship Qualifier. Discount early bird registration will be held Friday, April 19th, from 6 till 8 p.m., Saturday, April 20th, from 11 till 1 p.m., Friday, April 26th, from 6 till 8 p.m., and Saturday, April 27th, from 11 till 1 p.m. 
price is $75 for one child, $50 for the second, and $40 for each additional child residing in the same home. These rates are only for the early registration in April, and they must be paid in full at the time of registration. And Coach Kenny Martin uh, gave me a hat for Chrissy, but I don't see him here tonight, so I'll have to hold it for him. He's one of their honorary uh, players. And next, the Cockerell Award presentation. E.B. German Lodge, number two, FOP, Robert Martin. Our award recipient for this year is an example of the partnership organized labor and the United Way of Lackawanna County have for the people of our community. The recipient is E.B. German Lodge, number two, Fraternal Order of Police, presented by Robert Martin, represented by Robert Martin, president. President Martin and the FOP have taken a leading role in the community through the crisis intervention team and the critical incident stress management team. These teams became important community partners as a result of mental health crises in our city. Both the CTI and CISM teams work to ensure the city of Scranton and surrounding communities have compassion and understanding and counseling for our citizens and responding law enforcement officers. Because of their years of support to the United Way, its member agencies, and because of their community involvement, it gives me great pleasure to add to our list of distinguished labor unions and volunteers the Fraternal Order of Police, E.B. German Lodge, number two, represented by their president, Robert Martin. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Just one tonight. Um, at the um, home show that I spoke about the last few weeks, it will be held at the Marian Catholic School at 638 Hemlock Street. It's uh, April 29th from noon to 6. The city will be participating in and a sponsor of the Great Down Payment Giveaway, um, where prospective homeowners can receive up to $21,500 towards the down payment of a home um, in the city. And in, to be, in order to be eligible, there are income guidelines that have to be met. Um, for instance, one person, $33,150. Two people, $37,900, and it gradually goes up. Um, Residents, anyone applying must be 18 years or older and must be a citizen. So um, you could, people could pick up coupons in the city council office to fill out just a very short form um, to fill out to put in to, to be an applicant for that program, or you could do it at the home show. And that's all. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. The Scranton Lackawanna County Taxpayers Association will meet this Tuesday, April 23, 2013 at 6.30 p.m. in Scranton City Council Chambers. Interviews of the four Democratic candidates seeking the office of mayor of the city of Scranton will be conducted. The Fraternal Order of Eagles number 314 in Scranton will conduct its annual spring craft fair this Saturday, April 20th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Expect to find all manner of handmade goods, including items from Pampered Chef, Avon, and Mia Bella candles, among others. Food will be available for purchase. For further information, call the club at 961-5495. Earth Day 2013 will be celebrated in downtown Clark Summit this Saturday, April 20th, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., rain or shine. The event includes indoor flea markets, sidewalk sales, an artisan's alley, recycling stations, exhibits, and entertainment. What better way to enjoy Earth Day than by taking the family to this fun-filled celebration? And that's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Bill Jackowitz. Good evening, Scranton City Council. Good, Good, evening. Evening. Good evening. Last week, Ms. Ferranis misrepresented my comments. I never stated that council blamed the Republicans. As a matter of fact, I commended council for holding the caucus with the state representatives and senator. It was only 10 to 15 years late. The representatives were the ones who blamed the Republicans. I blamed the Democrats, Republicans, and independents. So let's set the record straight. And you can look at uh, last week's record or the taping of, of the 
meeting and it will show that. Uh, how about the local, local officials working on solving the problems that Scranton has, such as high unemployment, low wages, terrible roads and bridges, high wage tax, parking meters that are broken, parking garages that are in need of repair, $17 million Supreme Court award that needs to be paid, five and a half million needed to make the retirement and health care system solvent, <coughs> excuse me, money to pay landfill bill on time, not making double payments after you leave office, finding tenants for the $31 million taxpayers funded project called the 500 Renaissance, balancing a city budget, actually writing and approving a legitimate recovery plan that would work, stop borrowing money and actually raise revenue, stop raising taxes and then blame the other guy, collecting money in lieu of taxes from nonprofits, reducing the bi-weekly city payroll. Currently it is not affordable or sustainable of over a million dollars every two weeks. Why not invite the mayor back to council chambers to answer questions regarding the above mentioned problems? Just a reminder, the 2013 budget recovery plan that council and the mayor worked on was a total failure. In other words, it did not save any of Scranton's finance, solve any of Scranton's financial problems. Although it did allow the city to borrow another $14 million, which was the plan all along. Anyway, it had nothing to do with recovery for Scranton. As far as needing time to work out the financial situation of Scranton, may I remind the residents and taxpayers that Scranton has been distressed for 21 years, 98 days. That's 255 months. The supermajority has been in office for three years, 103 days. That's 40 months. Surely that is enough time to work out a solution. Under the watch of Mayor Doherty and City Council, the debt has grown, taxes have raised, and the city credit rating has, junk, has dropped to junk bonds. The three judge panel stated in court that Scranton has a problem with numbers. Oh, how so true. Could this be the reason why no financial institution is willing to, to take a chance on Scranton? Why are visitors at CMC Hospital receiving parking tickets after being called and informed that their loved ones are having a heart attack and they were requested to be there? Why were the parking meters on Mulberry Street removed and the University of Scranton given free parking? But yet, visitors at CMC and other hospitals get $25 parking tickets while going in and visit, visiting their sick relatives and university faculty and students park for free on Mulberry Street. That's not right. As far as running for office, I consider myself to be a fairly honest person who tells it the way I see it and deals with reality. A politician, on the other hand, deals with fantasy and illusions. They would tell you what you want to hear and get your vote. Their number one job is to get reelected. Everything else is secondary. I would like to remind the residents and taxpayers that it is not the politicians that gave you freedom. It's the war fighters, the United States military. First responders, firefighters, police officers, medical te technicians, brave citizens react when disasters happen to quell the disturbance and assist with the injured and calm the situation. Politicians give speeches and make more promises. For the most part, the politicians have caused the problems. Just look at Washington, D.C., Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, County Courthouse, and Scranton City Hall. There are several prior elected officials, county commissioners, state senators, elected judges, Congressmen, governors, mayors, state representatives who are now referred to as inmates in federal prisons. These are facts and you, can, you cannot make this stuff up. Nobody would believe you. Prisons nationwide are beginning to fill up with elected officials who are now, now called inmates. The clock is ticking. The city, city administration elected officials have until 30 June to come up with a solution and solve the financial crisis the taxpayers of Scranton find themselves in. This is why you were elected to be the leaders of the city. Once you solve the police and fire wars, then you must start on the pension fund to pay the retirees and their families health care. That is until 30 October. You wanted the job, now do the job. Come up with solutions and solve the problems that you, the elected officials, caused and you were elected to solve. Neighbors dodged stray bullets in Southside. Gunfire. Where is Mayor Doherty? The initial shooting took place one block from my residence. The second shooting happened eight blocks from my residence. Where are the elected officials of Scranton? I have yet to see the mayor or anybody else coming out and talking about this incident to reassure the citizens of Scranton that we have safe neighborhoods and that they're doing all that they can to keep us safe. If this would have happened in any other city in the United States, the mayor and elected officials would be out there calming the nerves of the 
residents and neighborhoods. Why does it not happen in Scranton? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we continue, I just wanted to comment very briefly on three issues raised by uh, Mr. Jackowitz. First of all, um, the pension dollars that are needed will be combined with the Supreme Court award. So they won't be two separate uh, financial transactions. All will be done at one time. Um, secondly, uh, regarding the unconscionable shooting in Southside. I spoke with the mayor about that just today, and there is a very intense investigation that is ongoing. It may take a bit longer than uh, was originally thought because it appears that it's going to be much bigger than what was originally um, well, what was originally thought to be the case. So please know that the Scranton police and other sources are very active on this case. And that's all I can comment on uh, regarding that issue at this time. And then um, I know that uh, Mr. Jackowitz had said that, well, you know, we have borrowed, we have raised taxes. Yes, that's true. But I think uh, we, we're all well aware of what led up to that for many, many, many years. And no one could stop it. None of the speakers, not myself. The financial house of cards collapsed. And we had a decision to make. Were we going to stand by and allow the city of Scranton to collapse? And that means your public services. No garbage pickups, no snow removal, no police, no fire services. We would just come to a grinding halt. Or we could try to get the city through in order that the residents would continue to receive their public services that their taxes pay for. And I frankly believe that the right things were done and that this city should never be allowed to collapse and that this city should never be allowed to be taken over by legislators in Harrisburg who are going to appoint a receiver to come in here and make all the decisions for this city, rather than elected officials or any input from the public. That is, that is the case. Those were the choices. And as I said, I firmly believe that by keeping the city alive and by keeping those public services going to each and every one that lives in this city. Council and the mayor did the right thing. And our next speaker is Joe Gilroy. Good evening, Council, Madam President, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Joe Gilroy. I'm Chairman of the Board at Electric City Television. And on behalf of the Board, which are also all volunteers like myself, I came here tonight to thank the Council for their support for allowing ECTV to continue the public service that we offer the community. Uh, the citizens of Scranton, many of them, as you know, are elderly, depend on our service to view these types of meetings as well as taxpayer meetings and other types of meetings as well. And your uh, generosity is going to allow us to continue for the, 
for the distant future. And I wanted to come in personally to thank you. You're very, You're very welcome. welcome. And we thank you for the excellent services that have been provided and for serving the needs of all of those who, for whatever their reasons, are homebound. Mm -hmm. and, and that is our, that is our core, and that is our, that is our mission that we will continue. And thank you very much, and I'll turn it over to the rest of the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. First off, my Good thoughts and prayers go out to all the victims of this heinous crime committed on the city of Boston on Monday. Uh, I hope they uh, catch the people responsible for that and punish them to the fullest extent. It was a, by eyes, it was a very cowardly act for people to do something like that, pick on innocent people. Uh, First off, I want to talk about a story that was on the news Sunday. To me, this is something good for the University of Scranton. There were 300 students came into the city and helped plant flowers in all the flower pots throughout the city. I think that was a great thing they did. Now, if the school would only follow their lead and contribute their fair share to the city, like people have been asking here for years, that would be another good thing that the school could do. If the students set an example, they should take that example and follow through with it. Uh, next thing. I didn't get a chance to talk last week. I want to talk a little bit about these food trucks. Uh, one of the biggest opponents of the food trucks is Carl Von Luger's Steakhouse. People that go to these food trucks, most of them have only maybe a half hour lunch. And they go, go pick up their lunch, go back to work. To go to Carl Von Luger's, you're there well over an hour. So these, these food trucks don't even affect Carl Von Luger's Steakhouse. And the people that shop at these trucks or buy food at these trucks probably can't afford to go to Von Luger's because their prices are outrageous in there. You have to be a doctor or a lawyer to go eat in that place. So uh, for them to complain about the food trucks, I think it's totally out of order. You know, they're not hurting their business at all. Uh, lastly, a resident that lives near the... Uh, Isaac Tripp School in Tripp Park on Everett and Dorothy Street approached me over the weekend last week and said, uh, cars, I think it's going north on Everett, are speeding on that street. There's no stop sign. There's a three-way stop sign. That block of Everett is the only one without a stop sign. Mm -hmm. He said, they're speeding. Children are walking there, getting out of school. And I could see it. He says, cars are bottoming out going up that hill. And you can see the gouges that are put in the pavement from these cars bottoming out. They're speeding, and the residents, their fear for the safety of these children walking there. And uh, they're asking for a stop sign to be put there. I have it in writing. Very good. And um, I believe that everyone on council likely received uh, an email, or may maybe it came through our office um, in our mail regarding that exact well, I spoke situation. To he, I told him to call City Council's office. So and I said we're, I would also speak about we're aware of it, and that will be forwarded to the proper parties. I, I think it's a very dangerous situation. Yes. And, 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 and I could see the proof of them. They are speeding with those gouges taken out of the pavement when they're bottoming out. So uh, hopefully that can be done sooner than later. Uh, that's all I have tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ozzy Quinn. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening. Ozzy Quinn, Taxpayers Association. I want to thank Mrs. Evans for announcing that the taxpayers will interview the four Democratic mayoral candidates next Tuesday beginning at 6.30. It will be live on ECTV. I'm uh, hoping that the watchers out there of ECTV will pay attention to this uh, interview, to these, to these interviews and to, or, to uh, educate themselves to what their, their plans, their platforms, and their solutions to the city. The city's in a shambles uh, financially. 
the blight, it's starting to spread into the neighborhoods. It's already spread into the neighborhoods. And it's important that the people know who they elect. It's crucial that the people know who they elect for mayor, that they just don't go and do the same thing they've done for the last decade and vote for the guy who is the, giving all the cronies the jobs and whatnot. It's very important because this city, uh, for the next four years, can get on the tubes or can, can, can get back up on its feet. And I really think it can get back up on its feet with a good administrator. Uh, I want to point out also that on May 14th, tentatively May 14th, I'll have the, we'll have the uh, Republican mayoral candidates here for, uh, for interviews, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, again, I'm hoping the people out there will watch this show on Tuesday night, next Tuesday, 6.30, each candidate will be given um, up to a half hour to be answered questions. And uh, they're not getting the questions beforehand. We want spontaneous replies, and we want to know uh, what they're thinking and have they been thinking, or are they just out there to show face. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next speaker is Gerard Hetman. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Gerard Hetman from Lackawanna County's Community Relations Department. Uh, two events we'd like to make Council aware of this evening. Both of them are warm weather events with uh, spring coming up here and hopefully here for to stay. Uh, first, next Saturday afternoon, April 27th, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at McDade Park, the Lackawanna County Commissioners, in conjunction with the Lackawanna County Community Relations Department, the Scranton Police Department, and the Lackawanna Heritage Valley will host a free bicycle safety fair for children. Uh, the event will take place, again, at McDade Park. It's free and open to the public. Uh, children can come, and parents also will have refreshments for everybody. The event is funded through sponsorships and uh, partners. There's no expense uh, from the taxpayers, and it's funded through community partnerships. Uh, children that attend will go through a brief, about 30 to 45 minute bicycle safety course presented by the Scranton Police Department and Kathy Fox from the Lackawanna County Highway Safety Program. They'll then get a wristband that will get them first a free bicycle helmet fitted to their size, again donated through community partners. And secondly, children will be entered to win a free bicycle uh, given away by Cedar Bike Shops. There'll be one male and one female winner for the free bicycles. So again, we encourage all the kids in the city to come out. Uh, have some fun with Dade Park and learn how to ride their bikes safely for the upcoming season. Again, everybody will get a free bike helmet, all children who participate, and they'll be entered to win a brand new bicycle. And I think uh, I can sympathize maybe with all the council members, not sympathize, but I think we can all speak that riding your bicycles around the neighborhoods of Scranton is kind of a rite of passage when you grow up in the city. So we want to help children be able to do that <coughs> safely and have fun with it. So we invite everybody to come out again next Saturday, April 27th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at McDade Park in Scranton. And uh, you're all welcome to come also, and we hope to see uh, everybody out for that. Uh, and secondly, just a reminder that the Lackawanna County Parks and Recreation Department will be holding its annual fishing derby for children coming up on Saturday, May 4th. Uh, it's open from children, for children ages 4 to 12, and there's two different registration times. Children ages 4 to 8 fish from 11 o'clock to 12.45 in the morning, and then children ages 9 to 12 fish from 1.15 to 3 o'clock. Uh, the cost is $5 to register per child, uh, and spinners cannot be used for those who are fishing. So to register, uh, you just go to the Lackawanna County website, lackawannacounty.org, and download a registration form on the Parks and Recreation section of the website. Uh, so again, thank you for your time, and uh, we hope to see everybody out for the Bike Safety Fair. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Terry Susek. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This is my fourth time attending the meeting in, I guess, a period of four years now. And I'm still with the same complaint. Uh, Frank Joyce is a w a well aware that I've sent several emails regarding Hilltop Manor, the trash problem there. Tenants putting their trash out in plastic bags instead of containment. And that they are in need, Sc Scranton Housing Authority needs to put screened in dumpsters in that complex. I mean, you have like 200 apartments and people just putting trash bags out. It's blowing all over my property as well as my, the neighboring properties and it's a mess. I had rats in my house this past winter 
And I've really about had it with the city not doing anything about this. This is the same problem over and over again. Were you to any of the Scranton Housing Authority meetings to inform the board of what's happening and what is needed? I spoke to Mr. Pellalucci himself, and the last time he spoke to me, he said, oh, I don't think there's enough property land to put the dumpsters on, which there is. There's a whole, down Saginaw Street, the last apartment, there's a whole big piece of empty land that belongs to them, and it's fenced in. So there's no reason why they can't put dumpsters in there as well as inside the <laughs> complex. And the last thing Mr. Pellucci said to me was, I'll look into it. And that's years ago. Never got a call back, nothing. Well, we can certainly send uh, another request on your behalf, but please understand that Scranton City Council has absolutely no control over the Scranton Housing Authority and its actions. Um, they, they are outside of our scope of authority, so the best we can do is to ask them once again. You know, every time you have come, I do remember you, and your problems are legitimate and council has sent request after request to the housing authority <laughs> to resolve this problem and obviously we've been ignored as well well i was told it's city-owned housing is that not correct no it's not correct it's just the housing authority would would own that the only um I believe the only um, housing project owned by the city of Scranton is Park Gardens. Okay, so in what you're saying is the city doesn't get any funding no. from that or anything else? Because no. I'm aware that no. they got $6 million and all I, from the feds, and all they spent it on, what I've seen, is toilets put in the place. And I don't think that constitutes $6 million. Well, that money, I'm sure, was applied for by the Housing Authority and then received by the Housing Authority. So the city would have no involvement in that whatsoever. Okay. The second thing I want to address is the shooting at Hilltop Manor, and that's another Housing Authority problem. They have very poor management there. There's no on-site management. You've got businesses running from them apartment, those apartments instead of tenants living there. You have gangs in there. There's people going in and out. At one point, I saw 12 people living in a two-bedroom apartment. And this is before they were, after finally they just left because I had complained so many times. And um, you have gangs in there. I've seen gang activity, drug activity. Uh, one person that I did report and I thought something was going to be done about, the only thing I saw there was a police officer go there and talk to the person on the porch when they answered the door and that was it never saw any anything and meanwhile the guys going around dealing drugs I I don't get it I don't understand as far as that shootouts concerned there's gangs in there that's why you're having a shootout and that's why you're having drug activity there's nobody checking why aren't they doing drug testing for tenants first of all that's what I'd like to know why aren't they getting the license plates registrations of the vehicles and making sure that they're insured because they're parking unregistered vehicles, uninsured vehicles on the street, on the public streets of Scranton. Nobody's checking. The cars are parked every which way. You guys have ordinances in this city and nobody's abiding by them. The police don't ticket them because they told me they're afraid they're going to get sued from the ACLU. So meanwhile, these people run rampant. They do what the heck they want. It's like a, a free-for-all in there. And I want to know why the city isn't enforcing its ordinances. Well, we can certainly speak with Chief Graziano about that particular issue. But I think for everything else that you have described, and they are serious problems, your, your best bet, frankly, is to attend a Scranton Housing Authority meeting and speak before its board of directors and demand answers from them. Okay. 
Um, another problem, too, um, I had called the Zoning and Permits Department. I was instructed by the Mayor's Office to call uh, regarding a neighbor's property. It's um, vacant property next to 731 Saginaw Street, which is design print. It's land that's owned, I was told it was owned by a developer. And that land is littered with trash. Looks like uh, something from the South Bronx. Tires, plastic bags, balls. Everything's over there that's been blowing from the housing. Mm -hmm. And they don't, do not cut their lawn. They don't cut it at the curb. And it grows like three feet high. I want to know why the city does nothing. I called and I left my phone number. And zoning and permits never called me back. Nobody called me back on it. Well, we're very familiar with that situation, unfortunately. Uh, we're <laughs> all too often trying to get answers ourselves uh, from the director of that department. And Well, uh, what's up with the person not going down there and finding them for this, finding the owner of the property? They know darn right well who yes, owns that they have, property. Uh, LIPS has the responsibility to contact the owner, I believe, and to instruct the owner, give them a uh, certain period of time in which to do the cleanup, to cut the grass, and that should be done. I mean, you have city department heads here that don't answer, don't return calls. I've never seen nothing like this in a city with 70-something thousand people, whatever, whoever's here, that these department heads don't do their jobs, don't return calls, and yet they're working their jobs. I mean, if, if it was my company and I had people that wouldn't answer calls, you know, within 24 hours, they'd be out. And yet, oh. everybody lets it, this is the only thing I've seen go on in Scranton. I, I agree with you. But again, the labor force, or let's say the city employees, are beyond the scope of city council because they're hired and fired by only the mayor. <laughs> so the, the mayor is their boss. Um, but, you know, we certainly will do what we can. And I thank you very much for your comments. I just want to follow up really quickly. What types of businesses are being run out of Hilltop Manor, if you don't mind me asking? There's one man that's in there, and he has a truck that comes several times a week, and he repairs furniture. At one point, he had saws out on his porch and everything else, because he saws the wood and fixes the furniture, and then somebody's picking up the furniture. This is somebody that's supposedly disabled that's doing all this work, carrying heavy things out of the truck, the friend's truck. Every, it's a weekly basis, a couple times a week. He's running an actual furniture repair shop from his apartment. And then there was babysitting, what I saw, babysitting services being run out of there. But those were actually babysitting for the dealer's kids so they could go around and deal. Because that was that $1.4 million ring that got caught a while ago. That was part of it. They had kids in the one apartment. Somebody, a couple of women would, would babysit. And then the rest of them would go out and deal the drugs. So this is like an ongoing thing with stuff that's going on in there with the gang activity. They need somebody to go, proper management to go around and go to those apartments once a year at least and check who's living there. That the person that's living there is the one that's signed on the lease. That's signed on the lease. I agree. You know, and I talked to somebody from housing too about that. And about that and garbage cans, because none of the tenants hardly have garbage cans. And she goes, well, her answer was, well, the tenants steal them. Well, if the tenants are stealing them, when you go and rent an apartment and they're going to vacate it, you go with a checklist and you check off. If they steal the cans, they don't get to rent another uh, welfare subsidized apartment. It gets reported. So I don't know why all this stuff's being allowed to go on. And this is the woman that was managing those apartments I spoke to. I mean, it's just excuse after excuse. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Our Ms. next Mrs. speaker Evans? is Dave Dobson. Yes. May, may I say? Certainly. Excuse, excuse me. That happens to be my neighborhood also. And I know that the other department heads work for the mayor, but we, our office works for council. And on, our beha on your behalf, we have sent many letters, called Mr. Pelicacci over and over, and basically got the same answers as uh, Mrs. Susick. However, we would be glad to follow up again 
I would uh, recommend that they call the police every time. I personally see the garbage out there many days prior to the pickup. It's blown into everyone's yard. And all of those lots, everything that she brings to council is exactly true. Mm -hmm. And yep. I, I understand their frustration as it is in our office, same thing. So. Yes, and I understand uh, Mrs. Susick's uh, frustration as well. Mrs. Craig, if you could please follow up with uh, Mr. Pelicacci, that would be greatly appreciated. And also just remind him that we have followed up uh, with him many times before about the same issue, and it's very problematic. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, Good resident evening. of Scranton. Um, on once again, that county suggested county sales tax i'd like to caution everybody here and out in tv land they plan to split it up and all you're doing is paying your own bills so if sooner than have me pay one percent more sales tax so it can go to a, other places in the county i'd rather pay four tenths of a percent and have it stay in Scranton. Cheaper all around. I'm tired of the, the 58 and 60 percent uh, property tax rises out of everybody. Uh, I understand with you people and I, I understand you have to do what you have to do. We couldn't do what a lot of people were suggesting, the bankruptcy and all of that baloney. Uh, I, the last thing I want to see is it in the hands of the state. Uh, I agree totally with your comments, Janet. And on the pen meters, I, I guess I misspoke a little bit. I guess that guy's paying property tax and all uh, last week. Uh, I watched the caucus and I'd say give him a pass. And uh, Faye Francis was right last week on one thing, that these people didn't even agree to speak up from that caucus on the plight of Scranton. Uh, understandable if you're outnumbered and people are lined up against you, you can't get something done. But to stand there and say I'm not even going to mention it is wrong. And that, that's what I got from the whole situation from watching uh, watching that, that caucus. I got here a little late and I didn't hear all the comments that day, but I did watch it on ECTV later. And uh, last night in West Texas, uh, there's a couple volunteer firemen missing from a huge explosion uh, from a chemical plant. And I might mention they're volunteer firemen fighting an industrial fire of a large industry, a fertilizer industry, they're probably making ammonium nitrate, the same thing that's been used in a lot of, uh, like uh, the Murrah building in Oklahoma City. And uh, these are things that are just being ignored by a federal government, Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, now, $7,500 was the last price, deductible was the last price my wife was quoted. And, and, you know, it's just right down the line. Wall Street lost $25 million on the city. So that's where your pension requirements are going up. Uh, it, it's just ridiculous. Uh, it's, a lot of these are federal issues because we're getting steamrolled. We're, we're just a microcosm of the whole situation. And they took $25,000 and wasted it out of the police and firemen's pension. And now we have to make it up at, what, $5 million a year, something like that. And it's really a shame. Nobody got prosecuted. And once again, sequester all future property if possible. And we should hold a caucus with zoning and planning boards to see, uh, with attorneys present, to see what we could do to get the sequester because uh, I don't want to see in five or ten more years 50 percent or uh, uh, tax exempt. It, it's just we're, we, we have too many tax exempt properties and that's all there is to it. And even in the case of the U, they're back suing over the parking fees. Uh, I talked to somebody 
at a rally Friday night and uh, talk about change CPI for Social Security. I mentioned that last week. His mother is living on $600 a month. This guy's taking money out of his pocket and paying his mother's bills. And I mean, you know, if you change the CPI, that makes it all the more harder for these people to pay their bills, their property taxes and, and so forth. And it's, it's, these should be happy times for, for people that get elected to office and, and you, you got the whole town it's approval and everything and instead you're struggling with situations like this I, what is it 13 percent doesn't get paid every year the property taxes doesn't get collected in the city right it's over 30 percent uh, 13 percent right or something like that 87 only 87 89 89 so collected. you know that's that's where these people they just can't afford to even pay their bills and it's really a shame and uh, have you received any financial reports uh, like you were supposed to? I think you mentioned you didn't get anything from the mayor's office or the administration. I received one for the first two months of the okay. year. I'm still waiting to receive the mm -hmm. uh, cash flow report yeah. as of the end of March. What can you do? The harder they try, the behind her they got. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Thank Don't you. Don't forget the bok, bok, bok. <laughs> is, is there anyone else who cares to address council? Madam President, if I could. Certainly. Uh, oh, I, I'm sorry. Andy, after you. I, no, go I'm, ahead. No, go ahead. Speakers. Go ahead. It gives me time to put my thoughts in order. Yeah. I just wanted to comment on Mr. Zumo last week. Yes. Uh, what happened, we investigated that. When he referred to a Mr. Campbell, he was really referring to Don King. Don King had previously met with Mr. Zumo. Uh, and as he said, there's two, pro there's two issues. Um, one is the neighbors on, on the left-hand side, uh, Bob Ma Bobby Mandola, who's a registered surveyor surveyed the property and found out that where the wall is constructed is, is accurate. It's not on Mr. Zumo's property. Mm -hmm. Mr. Zumo hired uh, John Hennemuth to do a survey and he confirmed the pins that Mr. Mandola put in. Mm -hmm. So where the wall is actually located is located on his neighbor's property and not on his property. Um, secondly, on the right hand side where the neighbor's fence is, uh, Mr. Zumo had hired an attorney, uh, James Aiden, who entered into a license agreement with the neighbor between the neighbor and Mr. Zumo. In the license agreement, it's not an easement, it's the, it's the lowest form of, uh, of, um, of, of, of permission. And pursuant to the license agreement, Mr. Zumo could tell him to remove the fence at any time. Mm -hmm. So where he was complaining about the fence, there is an agreement, there is the license agreement in there, and Mr. Zumo, pursuant to the license agreement, can have the neighbor remove that fence from his property at any time. As to FabCor, uh, what happened with that, uh, he gave an easement to go through the yard. Uh, for that easement, the consideration was, was that uh, he had the option to have his driveway replaced or take money. Uh, from what I understand, the easement was through the driveway and, and that's where the pipe went. And he had the option to either have his driveway re replaced or to take a monetary consideration. And what he did, he took the money instead of having his driveway repaved. Oh, okay. But what they did was that they replaced the driveway in the front where there's the paved cut, where the paved cut is to go into the, for the driveway. Mm -hmm. They did replace that part of the curb and they also put in new concrete sidewalks uh, there for where the driveway was and on each side of the driveway. He wanted the, them to replace all of, the, all of his sidewalks. He has slate sidewalks there. Mm -hmm. They said they couldn't do that in accordance with the settlement agreement. He accepted the money, but they were responsible to put in the new pave cut, the new curb, and the new sidewalk. Mm -hmm. uh, for the driveway because that's where they put the pipe through. 
So I just wanted to report to council that, you know, Mr. King had met with them, had investigated it, and they were the results of what Mr. Zumo, you know, of, of what his comments were. I just want to get that clarified with council. Thank you very much, Attorney Hughes. I'm sorry for that. No? No, no. When, when it's in your mind, it's best to let it come out while it's fresh. Uh, Andy Sprague, City of Scranton, Fels Grand Good evening. Uh, your uh, 5B, that's not a tit for tat deal, is it? Where you're taking the money from uh, Security Bank and Fidelity Bank and moving it to uh, PNC Bank. I assume it's not a tit for tat. I hope it's not anyway. I'm, when I'm, you start moving funds around, sometimes there's a lot of other things that are in there that's not coming out. But anyway, because they did give us the tan, even though they did put us in a lockbox. Okay, uh, D. I don't quite understand that D. When we put the meters on that street down there, I don't remember anybody going to the army and saying, "Is it? It's our street." We want to put our meters there. We don't have to care. Now we got a moratorium here, morandum agreement with the with the army that they can park where they always did park before. I mean, this is we are the laughing stock. I don't know who, in their bright mind, decided they wanted to put meters there. Well, you were on council then, so you. You might not have voted for it or anything well, like that. The legislation came down to us, but I have no idea how all of that originated, whose brainstorm that was. You know, that's the problem with Grant. We got too many people with brainstorms instead of common sense. Now, now it's in there. We're going back, and not only that, to cover up a moratorium with the army, so they can park there. How stupid <coughs> people are, Grant. They made an idiotic decision. And now they're trying to cover up with a more moratorium here. I think, them. I think if I could just add to that quickly, um, only the employees will be allowed to park there. Uh, anyone else will not be permitted. They're going to be issued uh, some type of identification for their cars so that the police will be aware. And if a car isn't I identifiable as a General Dynamics employee, then the police can ticket the car. That's and how part. much money are they giving us? Pardon? How much money are you giving the city? Oh, I'm sure nothing. Well, that's what I mean. This is one ridiculous thing after another ridiculous thing. I, 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 I had don't know how many people in the city would actually use that because, you know, it's a god place down there. Mm -hmm. But even to say, well, if you don't work in the plant here, you can't park on public streets that we own. Well, actually, I had contacted um, the vice president of General Dynamics, um, oh, this is probably two years ago, asking him for a pilot. And his response to me was generally just about the parking situation. What were we going to do about that? And, you know, I reminded him that the purpose of the call was really to see um, what they would be able to provide. And his answer was he would have to check with headquarters, which is located, I forget where, out of state. And he would get back to me. To this day, he never got back to me. Well, anyway, anyway, I like to see them get their parking spot back. But let's just say we made a mistake, should never have done it to begin with, and get away with that and just say, this is how government works. Sometimes we have good ideas, sometimes we have bad ideas, and that was a bad idea. Okay, let's move on. Uh, well, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that. But I will say something about our dear, dear county government in the Southside Complex. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that again. As you know, that's right next to a housing project. The kids used to play there. There was the tennis courts. I know they're not in good repair. Neog is, but they're not. But that's where the money went to Neog and not to anything by the housing project. But anyway, they asked us to fix that P 
piece of parcel after it was, I won't say it was stolen to us, but that's pretty close <coughs> to how to describe how it was taken from the city of, the people of Scranton. I wish Mr. Phillips would still come around. He spoke elegantly on that parcel of land at that time. And the mayor counteracted and said, don't worry about it, I'm going to give you another field with lights, all of that. Don't worry about it, we'll take care of it for you. But you know, and I know, they never got their field. Now the university wants us, the people of Pennsylvania actually, all of us, to pay for upgrading that field. Mm -hmm. field. And that's not quite right either. But unfortunately, nobody does anything about it. Nobody sends a letter down to the state saying you oppose this grant and the reason why you oppose it. This is the reason. I don't usually oppose grants. Some I don't like. But when this grant should be opposed, they can and do have the funding themselves to do whatever they want to do. Being that they took that thing, they gave us like a million point sum for it. But to replace the field probably cost about three. So anyway, I would like to see council do something like that, opposing this grant. That's the only thing you can do. No, saying no does not matter. Saying I disagree with it does not matter. You've got to take action. You might not get nothing with your action, but at least you tried. And that's with life. Like I say, you've got the parking authority down there still sitting. You didn't answer their resignation. We've got to wait for another mayor to come in to replace the thing. Well, you could have. They might not have done it. But doing what we did didn't help the city much. In fact, it made it harder for us to get loans. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher. Good evening. City resident Good and evening. taxpayer. Uh, I had planned this evening to talk about several properties, but in doing the, attempting to do the research, I had a similar problems as this woman. Um, I've been calling for weeks and not getting a, a telephone even answered or a, or a voicemail. And so today, this morning, fairly early, I thought I'd really lucked out because I was put into the office and I thought, ah, finally. At which time I received a, a message, a voice message. I was asked to leave a voice message. The only problem was the voice message box was also filled. So it was, it was nothing. Um, so I, I may just bring it back here because it, it's somewhat time critical, but not tonight because I do want to do a little bit more research. Um, so I'm going to revert back to some uh, seeking answers to some questions already asked and some new ones for tonight. Uh, first of all, with respect to 7B, uh, the budget, as I recall, said the repayment would be without interest. Is that what the agreement says on 7B? I believe so, but let me make sure. Thank you. Yes, there is nothing mentioned about interest. Not even that there's none. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, with respect to 4D, um, I don't understand why an agreement is is even required and one of the questions Mrs. Evans just answered on whether or not the parking would be restricted to GD employees only um, I'm not sure that we really there, there seems to be a little bit of misunderstanding on what this is about it I don't know if anybody actually read the memorandum of understanding I didn't get here in time I'm sorry it what it states is that during force protection condition delta which is the highest personnel readiness level for the department of defense all vehicles entering the installation must receive a comprehensive and time consuming inspection because of that the um, scranton army ammunition plant is asking that in order to facilitate their work day at the plant and not have a lineup of cars outside waiting for inspections that they be allowed to park along the plant where there are currently no parking signs oh, they man. are re they are requesting from the city to use that those spaces during this particular status um, alert status and that's all it is okay how will the if the general public were to park there and get, I, I don't get know ticket, how, how, would, I don't how, know how they it know? would be implemented but what I'm saying is that this is under certain condition and it's a request being made by by the Defense Department not something that the city is request or you know doing okay um, and then uh, a segue on that um, uh, mr. Joyce I brought several times at least twice to my recollection the case law saying that commercial operators of government owned contractor operated facilities were to pay property taxes and um, I asked if you were going to do that before the last budget and you said you would I don't know did you do it and and find that because that's a half a million dollars on that property a year did you did you seek that out or did you find out that that was not possible or I, I did do some research into it um, I'm not 100% sure if it's possible or not uh, $500,000 is a lot of money I would think we would pursue it through through legal means you do have a copy of the case law that I gave you yes okay I, I don't have it with me right no, now I but didn't, I do wouldn't have expect it. that but you do have a copy <laughs> okay uh, maybe within the next several weeks you could complete that and yes and, and get okay and then on 4e uh, st. Mary's Villa is not within the city uh, boundaries why are we concerning ourselves with that issue and is it a resolution or I don't understand why it's even on the agenda since it's not city business I believe the the loan is run through the city but the city has no financial obligation or and the city provides no financial guarantee for it but why wouldn't they go through their own municipality I don't know they could have I I imagine they could have gone through Lackawanna County perhaps but yeah. it, it just seems very very strange and like we've got enough with our own uh, and then mr. Joyce I last week I asked if you agreed with my calculation that our current real estate taxes are lagging uh, by about three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars through I guess it was February and no I guess you whatever figures you had uh, it if you adjust for the 22 percent increase differential I know that we did finish a little bit behind last year as far as real estate taxes are concerned and I'm waiting for uh, our business administrators most recent projections as of the end of March as to what he thinks we're going to receive by the end of the year based on what we've seen so far um, okay I, I really think when you when you do make the comparisons you shouldn't say we're ahead of last year because we're only ahead of last year because of the 22 percent increase. increase and I yes, think you I should put them that. on an apples to apples basis 
in the future when you report them, if you would, I think, or at least qualify it. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Mr. McGough, is that uh, location on Hemlock Street where the, the fire was uh, a registered rental property where the 12 p persons were evacuated? No, I, I ask you to check that out. I did not. Okay, and as long as I've got your attention, I got one more for you, and that is how many of the properties that have paid the rental registration have had the inspections performed? I, I do not know. Could you find out? I will try. Okay, thank you. Um, and again, I asked last week, how much will remain in the RERE account after I, the- I actually I, I have, have that, that and I, I was going to address it under motions tonight. Okay. Um, who is paying the matching funds for the, the NAOG do-over uh, for the RACP? There are no there matching are none. funds. There are no matching funds required. No. I've, That's I asked not that what question. the legislation says. I mean, I went to Blake's office, and they they say there are, but um, well, it was applied for you know, by the Scranton Recreation Authority. So, so if indeed they, there are any matching have, funds required, that's their responsibility. But have, we did speak with uh, Ryan McGowan and others to check this out because my concern was that the city would be on the hook for matching funds. And I was told yes. unequivocally, well, no. Okay, well that, that was my first concern. Then I would imagine maybe the municipal authority has it because I do know when uh, Mr. Smith, a former representative, uh, when inquiring why he managed to give so many millions of dollars to the university for the Mulberry Street project, said because they had the matching funds and the city didn't have any matching funds so he couldn't do anything for any city project. So, um, just so it's not, okay. I'll see you next week. Thank, Thank you, you, good Lord willing. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just to answer your question regarding 5E, um, and I don't know for sure, but just reading in the back up, it appears because it's the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority, they're the applicant, so because of the Scranton Lackawanna, it might be something the city and Lackawanna County has to approve. Um, I could provide you the backup if that's you would like. Idea. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's how it reads, but I, I'll give it to you after the meeting. Okay. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Mrs. Craig? 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have uh, any comments or motions? A, a couple follow-ups. Uh, first of all, on the parking at the uh, Scranton Army Ammunition Plant, uh, in the backup, um, it says responsibilities. From the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant, number one, immediately notify the Scranton Police Department in the event of an elevated force protection, force protection condition level to Delta, so that the parking would only take place during that alert status. Second, designate authorized SCAAP vehicles with the sticker clearly visible in the windshield. So that uh, apparently any, any vehicle not having a, an appropriate sticker would be deemed um, to be in violation of the no parking ordinance. Uh, and uh, the responsibilities of the Scranton Police Department allow for parking um, during this conditions and ensure that citations are not issued to vehicles authorized to park there um, as determined by paragraph 4A2, which is the stickers. Um, so it, it, it's, to me, it's a, you know, it's a reasonable request and uh, you know, certainly understandable on the part of um, the Scranton Army Ammunition Plant. Um, second, uh, in response to a, a, a letter that was received by City Council apparently and um, sent to Mr. Santoli, the um, forestry, who is in charge of the forestry department, I guess, under the pub Scranton Public uh, Department of Public Works. I guess there was a concern 
about the tree population in Naog and throughout the city of Scranton. And Mr. Santoli responded um, as he usually does. He's, he is very protective of what he perceives to be his trees. And his response was that our population of 1.1 million trees contained in our 20 plus square mile city are not in any d serious danger of widespread dying by any cause. Um, and that this study was accomplished through the work of the US Forest Service. And he further states, there is no urgency for any immediate action except what I have been doing so proudly for the last 12 years and hope to continue for several more years. Um, I would think that if there were a problem with any of the forestry areas throughout the city, any trees, that Mr. Santoli would be the first to respond. Uh, as I said, he has a great love for the city and especially for um, the forestation throughout the city. Oh, and Mr. McGough, I, I agree with what you're saying. I actually was the council person who received the email from a resident who lives very near Nayog Park. And uh, his email was quite um, knowledgeable of uh, forestry matters. And so I had asked Mrs. Craig if she would please forward it to Mr. Santoli. Mm -hmm. So I'll see that this gentleman gets a copy of that. And, it, and it, as you probably saw in the response, Mr. Santoli is more than happy to discuss um, the tree situation with anyone. Um, and I'm sure that whoever sent the email, if um, they are interested in speaking with Mr. Santoli, there is a contact number which can be provided to, yes. to that person. Um, I, I didn't know if I was going to mention anything about this, but uh, I guess uh, having participated in a number of running events, um, I, I guess I feel a little bit obligated to at least mention the occurrences in Boston. Um, for anyone who has never attended a road race, um, the finish line is filled with spectators. It's designed so that the last 100 yards, 200 yards of the finish, spectators, which is usually comprised of families, friends of the participants, so that they can get a close look at their loved ones. Finishing an event that I think something like 2% of the population has done. Um, knowing, you know, just from Steamtown, I've never, never had the honor of running in Boston, but just from running in Steamtown, th there are two things that you look at or look for when you get towards the finish line. One is the clock and the other is for the people that you know are there. And the only thing that the people that are there are there to cheer on and to, you know, the, to um, be involved in the euphoria that surrounds this event. These bombs that went off targeted innocent spectators. It had nothing to do with the participants in the race. This was... At, these spectators aren't government officials. They're not military people. They're, they're, they're just ordinary citizens who want to enjoy the day. And this was nothing more than a premeditated cowardly act by someone or, or persons that really needs a strong and definitive response. Um, my thoughts are with all of the participants in the race in the recent Boston Marathon and the spectators and the families that were affected by this. I am sure that the city of Boston will survive and I'm pretty sure that the Boston Marathon itself will survive. But this was a heinous act 
and uh, just something that affected me knowing some of the people that were there and thankfully um, all of the local participants um, were safe um, and unaffected well, physically unaffected by uh, the events and that's all I have thank you thank you and councilman Rogan do you have comments or motion yes thank you I um, mean as, as mr. McGough so eloquently said um, my heart also goes out to to those um, the runners in Boston and the spectators and Hopefully those responsible will be brought to justice in the very near future. Um, just a couple issues I'd like to talk about tonight. Um, the first one is I'd like to thank three members from the DPW for their great work over the last week. Um, Larry Wynn, Mike Fergioni, and Joe Haggerty. Great work that they did in Westside following a storm clearing out some debris from uh, sewers on the, side of, on the grids on the side of the road and potholes. and few issues in, in uh, a few neighborhoods in West Grant and that people have contacted me about. Um, next, I just want to address an issue that's been brought up to me a lot going through the community. And um, it, it, it's regarding vacant lots throughout the city. Um, traveling through the city, and this is, it's, it's no secret that there are a lot of vacant lots in the city that aren't maintained. Um, some of them were properties that were, there were properties there and they were torn down and uh, they just sit vacant many times in a neighborhood between two buildings. Um, other times they're properties that were just never developed and they're eyesores to neighborhoods and they could also be safety problems in many of these neighborhoods. And I think what, what has to happen is the next mayor and the next city council or even current mayor and current council to get something going um, to try to address this problem. Many of these properties are tax delinquent. Um, I know there, there is the Pittsburgh plan where they could be sold to neighbors and that's the direction I think we have to go but the process has to be sped up. I've had so many people contact me and say, you know, I have this vacant lot next to me. I've been maintaining it because I want my neighborhood to look nice but it would really be nice if I could own that. Fence it off, make a bigger yard, put in a driveway, a swimming pool, so many different things that can be done. and. I think that, especially in the situation when the taxes aren't being paid currently on that land, even getting it to the neighbors for, for a dollar or having, if there's two neighbors interested, have them bid on it um, and have them add it to their, to their property. They'll, over the long run, they'll be paying taxes on that land, um, which will bring it, you know, a, a little bit of additional revenue into the city, but even a bigger benefit than that is the blight from the neighborhood is removed. Um, so it's something I definitely think w that needs to be looked at and, and streamlined to try to speed up that process and, <clears throat> and identify these lots because if you just drive down almost any block in Scranton, you're going to notice these. And especially in West Scranton and South Scranton and North Scranton where the houses are very, very close together, these lots you can't build on um, because there's, there's buildings on each side often. So it's, it's land that really can't be developed but it would be great if, if the neighbors can make that part of their property and take care of it and, and maintain it. Um, next one issue, and I, I try not to bring up zoning issues too often at council meetings since it, it is a, another, a separate body, but a, a few neighbors brought this up to me, and this one is, is right in the neighborhood where I just recently purchased a home. Um, this is on the agenda that we received for the zoning board on Wednesday, April 10th. Um, the first item on the agenda is regarding the old John Marshall School. And it states, Arthur Russo Construction, 124 North Main Ave, applicant seats use and parking variances to convert an elementary school building at the corner of Orm Street and North Lincoln Ave to residential apartments, R1A zone. Now I know myself and other neighborhood neighbors are, are staunchly opposed to this. Um, this was supposed to be on the agenda for zoning last week, but I believe the application was withdrawn. Um, so I'd just like to make that announcement so anyone who would, would like to address the, the zoning board, I'm going to try to make it to the meeting myself um, to voice my opposition. And uh, anyone not from the area, the Orm Street area of West Scranton is, is very nice, a uh, very nice quiet neighborhood. And certainly the last thing that's needed there and the same when council fought against the, the apartments in Manuka is a, is a large apartment building um, without, without parking. So I just wanted to get that out there as well. Um, finally, a few citizens' requests. I'm not going to read all these off. 
um, but we received a memo that a resident called to report a long list of potholes. Uh, most of them seem to be in South Scranton and Manuka area. So if we could please forward that to DPW. And also one other issue, um, apparently I guess about a week or so ago, a stop sign was placed on the corner of North Bromley and Swetland Street, also in my neighborhood. Um, I don't know who, who put the request in. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with the stop sign being put in, but there, there's no notification. There, there is about a block back, a little sign that has you know the picture of the stop sign. I know in the past, and I think the state, what they do is they put a little flashing light on a new stop sign for the first 30 days um, to notify drivers. Because when you're in the habit of traveling a road for however many years, and uh, a new stop sign, new stop sign or traffic light is put up, many, many people don't notice it, and they go right through it. And it's creating a very dangerous situation at that intersection. And I'll be honest, I didn't even know it was put up until a friend said, hey, when was that stop sign put up? And I said, well, what stop sign? Until I went out and looked, because you're, you're used to going through, you know, just your daily commute, and you, you don't notice things like that unless there's, you know, a light or, or something to, to notify you. Um, so please, can we request that the DPW to put a flashing light on the two new stop signs at the corner of North Bromley and Swetland um, for maybe 30 days or, you know, some period of time that they find uh, to be acceptable? I was just going to, if, if you don't mind, oh, sure. uh, on the way over, I noticed that the um, traffic lights at the intersection of Orchard Street, Cedar Avenue, and um, the entrance and um, exit from 81 or from the expressway are now in a flashing status, um, which I was, I think we found out that they're supposed to go on that for a number of days which I would think that those lights will then be operational in the very near future. So again, yeah. you know, people who are used to traveling that area, um, please be aware that uh, those light, they may be functioning traffic signals within the next week or so. And I, I travel that route to work every day, and I, I know there was a police officer there monitoring the situation um, the other morning when they, they had the flashing lights on. And, you know, that's exactly what I'm, what I'm saying with the situation with the stop sign. At least in this, you know, they put the flashing reds up first to, you know, let people know that there, there, there's a new device going in. And it does take time to get used to it. I know you mentioned when the new stop sign was put in, or the new light was put in the corner of River and Meadow. You know, it takes a little bit of getting used to. And we certainly wouldn't want, you know, people, one person to stop at the new sign and the other to keep going and rear end them or you know some sort of accident so if the DPW could put that up for a, a short amount of time that would definitely you know help the safety in that neighborhood and regarding um, 5d with um, general dynamics I will be voting yes for the legislation but I actually think the better solution is just to take the no parking signs and remove them and let the workers park there um, the idea of putting those meters up to begin with was was terrible you know, you can't, they're basically at that point, they were asking the workers to, to give up a dollar an hour um, of their pay um, with, with the rates of the meters and possibly getting a, a, uh, a fine if they're not able to run out, you know, in the middle of the day and, and, and feed the meter again. Um, you know, meters are made for turnover in a, in a business district. They're not made to extract extra money out of workers, um, you know, from, from any type of plant. And then it seems that the, the no parking signs were just put up to be vindictive after the workers wouldn't park there. Um, so if we could also send a request to the administration, if, if everyone agrees, just, just to remove those no parking signs altogether. I know there's a shortage of signs in the city. I'm sure there's areas where they could be used where they would be much more beneficial um, besides that street. And uh, that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. I definitely you. agree with that. Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, just a few things. Uh, first, my heart and prayers go out to the victims of the, the Boston Marathon blast. Uh, and also in my hearts and prayers are the first responders and the victims of the explosion in West Texas as they're still continuing to, uh, you know, dig through the, the remnants for victims and hopefully, you know, they'll find more people alive there. But... Um, 
you know, it's, it just seems like a lot has happened in the last week in, in these fronts. But uh, we're a strong nation and we'll pull together and we all work together to do it. Uh, there were issues brought up at the meeting here, but, but I had uh, spoken to Chief Graziano at the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association. I am scheduled to be meeting with him on, on several issues and some of the things that were brought up tonight I will uh, address with him also. Um, he is one of the few department heads that is very responsive, answering our questions uh, through letters and, and meetings. So I do commend the chief on, on that. Um, let's see here. And just, uh, just finally, uh, Mr. Rogan stole my thunder on that ammunition plant parking. <laughs> Did you get my note on that one too? No. Well, it's good that, but, good that we agree. But, uh, you know, I, I think I've stated it before and it's been stated here previously, uh, you know, that that was an issue that should never have started in the first place. Uh, however, you know, I, I don't know what the proper way to go about it is. Do we have to repeal that legislation that was put in there? Because they haven't even abided by the, the legislate the parking ordinance there. Uh, they took the meters without notifying city council and, and planted no parking signs there. I, I don't think that and, was done legitimately. If, we've discussed this before. If somebody were to park there and receive a ticket, they could challenge it in court because those parking me those those no parking signs are not legal. They were never approved by, by city council or signed by the mayor. Right. And I think the meters were part of a, a, a an ordinance where they took the meters from CMC with that deal and moved them down there. In the meantime, now they've taken them back out of there, moved them up to CMC and planted no parking signs. Uh, I do think, I mean, I agree with this, this legislation tonight. I will be voting on it, but I think it should be expanded even more, as Mr. Rogan stated, to, uh, you know, allow parking for, for everyone there, back to where it was at one point. Um, so whatever method we have available to try and rectify that, I would you know, be in favor of, of researching. And that's all I have. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Lusco. Mr. Joyce, do you have comments or motions? Yes, I do have some comments. First, um, <coughs> I want to remind everyone again to remember in your thoughts and prayers the victims of, of the tragedies that happened in Boston recently uh, during the Boston Marathon. It's just terrible to see the way uh, some some events get ruined by senseless acts of terror, and it's just it's just really a shame that we've seen such such things happen. Secondly, uh, just to give a, a quick snapshot of where the city's at, our current cash balance is at ten point nine million dollars. And we have $315,000 in accounts payable. As a second order of business tonight, um, Mrs. Schumacher asked, uh, I, I believe it was a few weeks ago, about the uh, RERI account in regard to how much money would remain in the RERI account after we provided ECTV with $20,000 being that we vote to provide them with the $20,000. Uh, we've received a response from Ms. Abley on that, and she sent a letter saying that uh, she's in receipt of the letter that we sent her on April 15th. It was received on April 16th, re requesting the information as to uh, how much would be in the RERI account after $20,000 was taken out of it. And she replied that the balance of the last bank statement that was received by this office, being OECD on March 31st of 2013, was $61,696.96. And please be aware that this balance continuously changes due to, de due to deposits made from loan repayments received by the office. And she also did mention that a repayment in the RERI account in the amount of $63,360.89 is anticipated from the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency, PEMA, for the reimbursement from the Crisp Avenue Bridge Project. So 
that's just a quick update as to where we are with the RERI account. Next, I wanted to speak a little bit about the audit. And a lot of people uh, come up and question, you know, will the audit be done on time? And I'm sure those questions will start to come up more and more as we approach May 31st, which is the deadline specified in the Home Rule Charter. And I will uh, comment that uh, Mr. McGowan did provide us with the status update and the audit is running a little bit behind according to the status update. He projects that it would be done in June. But what I will do is I, I just want to give a brief snapshot of what must be done in order to complete the audit. I, I, I know a lot of people may think that the BA's office simply just needs to send them a bunch of information, but there are a number of uh, steps that the BA's office must take and must be done on a certain timeline, which has been lagging over the recent years. First, all bank accounts must be reconciled to, appro to its appropriate gen general ledger account, and also um, the BA's office needs to provide supporting documentation for any deposits and trans transit and any outstanding checks that are over 60 days old at the end of December 31st of 2012. This has been completed. Also, the BA's office has to provide cash, a, tra a cash transfer schedule for all December deposits and transit and the outstanding checks between Citibank accounts. This has been completed. The BA's office has... Um, also uh, has to report current and delinquent taxes receivable. Um, the, the receivable should be completed by April 30th of 2013. Investments are to be segregated from cash accounts on trial balance. This has been completed. Investments are to be recorded at fair market value. This has been completed. Interest receivable on investments need to be recorded. This has been completed. Interfund receivable and payables must be reconciled, and this is expected to be done by April 30th. Operating transfers in and out must be reconciled. This has been completed. Accounts receivable and accounts payable need to be recorded on each fund. This has been completed. Wage accruals need to be recorded on each fund. This has been completed. Appropriate, appropriate receivables must be recorded on special cities fund for expenditures made and accrued. This has been completed. <coughs> the BA's office also needs to provide an analysis for explanations for any budgetary variances that exceed $50,000, either positive neg or negative, and an overall 10% change in account. This should be completed by April 30th. The BA's office also needs to provide an analysis for any prior year variances that exceed $50,000, either positive or negative, and an overall 10% change in the account. This should be completed by April 30th as well, according to Mr. McGowan. Um, a list of any new federal grants received in the calendar year of 2012 has to be provided. This has been completed. An explanation on any special cities accounts that has no that had no activity in 2012, as of the status of those deferred revenues, that needs to be uh, provided, and that's been completed. Provide res or council resolutions for opening of any new bank accounts or special cities general ledger accounts. That's been completed. Receipt of confirmations from the single tax office and Northeast Revenue Services. Um, that hasn't been completed yet. And there's, um, and it's not been received by the city yet. So once that's received by the city, that will be sent to Rossi and Rossi. Healthcare analysis work papers and reconciliation of city billings to, to school, to school district for the single tax office health care expenditures needs to be sent to the auditor. This uh, should be completed by April 30th of 2013. Reconciliation of parking meters uh, collected and management fee paid to the parking authority to the to the parking authority to the parking authority records. Um, this has been completed. 
Copies of any federal or state audit reports issued in 2012 or 2013 needs to be sent in. This has been completed. Final trial balances of 2000, or December 30th of 2012 and copies of su supporting work papers on all balance sheet accounts. This is, will be completed by April 30th. Final 2012 calendar year general ledger uh, needs to be sent in. Uh, this is to be completed by April 30th as well. Uh, reconciliation of city pension records to financial statements prepared by Thomas Anderson. This has been completed. Uh, reclassification of revenues and expenditures in special cities fund for financial statement purposes. This has been completed. Finalized fixed asset schedules and entries necessary to record uh, activity for GASB 34 conversion, including an infrastructure report. This should be completed by May 15th. GASB 47 post-employment terminations benefit calculation needs to be performed. This should be done by May 15th. Compensated absentees calculation, this should be uh, completed by May 15th. Actuarial calculation on GASB 45 post-employment benefits uh, needs to be completed. This should be done by May 15th. Receipt of all attorney correspondences, this should be done by June 1st of 2013. Management discuss and discussion and analysis section of the audit report needs to be completed. This should be done by June 1st. Signed management representation letter, uh, this should be completed on June 1st. And an exit conference held, this should be done during the last week of June of 2013, according to our BA. So that's a quick snapshot of what the business administrator's office has to provide as far as the audit is concerned and as far and also where we are as far as um, those topics are, are um, specified. I'm very pleased to also see that uh, department heads have been responding to requests made by council. Uh, one of the recent requests that was made dealt with a property on 712 Einan Street and I'd like to applaud Mr. Dewar, uh, Director of Public Works, for responding that the City of Scranton DPW had the Department of Agriculture Office of Surface Mining go to, uh, the se go to 712 Einan Street on April 11th and determined that it was not a mine-related hole that was in the person's backyard and subsequently the owner was notified. I'm very glad that he uh, gave us an update on that. And also regarding speeding and ATV traffic on Sloan Street, uh, we received a, um, a letter back from Acting Chief Graziano, which is uh, entitled to Mrs. Craig, actually, in regards to the to the complaints received regarding speeding motorists on Sloan Street, um, Chief Graziano has directed the patrol captain to notify patrols to monitor this location. With regards to the ATVs on city streets, it's illegal for ATVs to traffic or to travel on city streets. The exception would be if the ATV rider is crossing a city street. Officers will enforce ATVs traveling on city streets. However, they must exercise caution in their methods to apprehend these riders. And he also uh, gives us a note to contact his office if we have any further questions. So I'm very glad to see that department heads are responding to our requests. And finally, Mrs. Craig, I have one request, and it's dealing with the vacant property next to 731 Saginaw Street that Mrs. Susek um, brought up. Obviously, the, uh, the property is littered with trash, and the lawn is not taken care of, grass is never cut, and it's a nuisance to the neighborhood. So if we could send that request in to Mr. Seitzinger, it would be greatly appreciated. And that's all. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, the Office of City Council received a response recently from Chief Graziano to Ms. Schumacher's request for the number of arrests during the past year for buying illegal drugs. In 2011, the Scranton Police Department arrested 250 individuals for possessing a controlled substance. And in 2012, the department arrested 192 individuals. 
Chief Graziano adds, quote, it should be noted that statistics do not specifically track buying illegal drugs, but would fall under the category of possessing a controlled substance. In addition, as uh, Councilman Joyce mentioned, Council's office received a response on April 16th from OECD Director Linda Abley to Ms. Schumacher's request. And I'll just speak on that a bit further. Um, as a result of the facts that were announced by uh, Councilman Joyce, the RERE account will have total funds of $125,000 $57.85. Since the legislation to approve the ECTV grant did not reach Council until April, it appears that $20,000 will be deducted from that total. Also, uh, in response to a request from Mr. Spindler, um, I'd like to read what Chief Graziano had to say. In regards to the complaint received regarding the traffic light synchronization in downtown Scranton, I have been advised that the initial synchronization of the new downtown traffic lights is tentatively scheduled for next week. Our agency will contact PennDOT if the final traffic light synchronization does not improve any downtown traffic light issues. Uh, I know that one of our council speakers had also asked for um, information from uh, the single tax office. I can't recall which one of you it was. Nevertheless, I'll read the response that we received from Mr. Courtright, tax collector. This letter is in response to your letter dated March 25th, 2013, whereby you inquired as to whether or not our office could determine the number of people working downtown. We would not be able to give you an accurate number for several reasons. For instance, there would be some people that work in two places. There would be some people who may earn less than $12,000 who don't pay the LST tax. And lastly, the LST tax is paid at multiple times throughout the year. And I just wanted to report those responses to the individuals who posed the inquiries. Um, also, in response to a request made by the West Scranton Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch and Mrs. Karen Foster to both Mayor Doherty and me, the Jackson, C the Jackson Street Skate Park will see the installation of a new fence this year. A mandatory pre-bid field inspection conference will be held on Thursday, May 2nd at 10 a.m. And proposals for this project will be opened in council chambers on Friday, May 17th at 10 a.m. Mrs. Foster made me aware of the urgent need for a new fence on March 22nd. And the following week, the mayor and I discussed her request and agreed to move forward quickly. I'm very pleased that the skate park will be taken care of for the residents, teens, and children of the West Scranton Hyde Park neighborhood. Uh, next, I was extremely disappointed and concerned for the taxpayers by the county's refusal to review the status of nonprofits to examine whether they meet the criteria for property tax exemption. Just as Allegheny County has aggressively pursued its nonprofit review, which I have frequently discussed during our council meetings, so too does Lackawanna County need to ensure that all properties off the tax rolls deserve to remain so. Since the city of Scranton has no authority over the surrounding communities of Lackawanna County, and the commissioners have chosen not to help them, we will not include them in our actions. However, it is important to the city's case for a commuter tax this year that the city takes 
every possible measure to obtain revenue from tax exempts. Thus, I will be asking our council solicitor and city clerk for their assistance in further pursuing this matter as soon as possible. Uh, next, I'd like to read an email from the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association regarding rooming house inspections. And this was not sent to uh, directly to council's office, but rather to Mr. Seitzinger with copies to council's office. Um, thank you for the incomplete inspection of the rooming houses at 312 314 New Street and 824 826 Kapaus Avenue. At first, the neighbors who were observing called it a farce. But then we realized that a complete group, group of inspectors was not available. We were under the impression that an electrical inspector and third party inspector were on scene. We will await a date or dates for a health inspection, fire department inspection, etc. Your department was mentioned by someone in a standing room only crowd at our PBNA meeting last night, and a quote was made from a partial observer from outside of the neighborhood that, quote, it is not just in Pinebrook that we hear these complaints about LIPS and its director, end quote. We hear the same complaints all over the city. The PBNA is working toward a clean and safe environment for all of its residents. We expect the city to do the same. We would also request inspection information on a property located at 1201 Kapaus Avenue, and it's signed by the members and officers of the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association. So Mrs. Crake, if we could please send a letter to Mr. Seitzinger asking what inspections remain to be completed for the rooming houses at 312 314 New Street and 824 826 Kapaus Avenue, and on what dates the inspections will occur. Also, uh, the Pinebrook Neighborhood Association requests inspection information for the 1201 uh, Pouse Avenue property. And I believe that's it. 5B, transferring funds from Fund 01 City of Scranton Penn Security TAN A and Fidelity Bank 2012 TAN accounts which projects are completed and no longer needed for the conduct of city business and abolishing and closing said accounts and transferring the funds remaining in said accounts to the PNC general funding checking account listed below. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, establishing a no parking zone along the westerly side of the 1700 block of North Washington Avenue, beginning from the end line of pin 13518030019, northward to the corner of the 1100 block of Electric Street, westward and southward ending at the end line of pin 13518030017 on the 1800 block of Wyoming Avenue. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a memorandum of understanding between the Department of the Army Scranton Army Ammunition Plant and the City of Scranton to allow parking along Mattis Avenue and River Street where no parking signs are present. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Uh, I just, one comment, uh, just to, I didn't want to respond before. Rather than making that uh, open parking, um, it might be worthwhile to look into permit parking for that area. Mm -hmm so that uh, the employees of the of general dynamics can use it all the time absolutely as, as part of a parking uh, program <coughs> thank you mr McGon. is there anyone else 
All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E, approving the financing by the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority of a certain capital project for the benefit of St. Mary's Villa Nursing Home Incorporated, a Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, declaring that it is desirable for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the city of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, and the area served by St. Mary's Villa Nursing Home Incorporated, to have the project provided by and financed through the authority, designating the mayor of the city, or in his absence, the president or vice president of the city council as the person to act on behalf of the city council as the applicable elected representative within the meaning of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, authorizing such mayor of the city or the president or vice president of the city council of the city to take certain actions on behalf of the city council of the city as such applicable elected representative and authorizing other necessary and appropriate action. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5F, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for Pocono Sign and Graphic 1147 The Hideout, Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania, for removal of existing signage located on left side facade, replaced with new signage of the same dimensions, black and white color scheme and change business name on existing, existing awning to match dimension of 10 inches high by 7 feet wide at 414 Spruce Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, file of council number 17, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to disperse $20,000 from the account into which repayment of urban development action grants, UDAG, are deposited, UDAG repayment account, for an operating grant to ECTV, the city's PEG channel operator. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for <coughs> adoption, resolution number 14, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to procure a forbearance on payments to the Keystone Sanitary Landfill in the amount of $1 million for year 2013 and to repay said amount in 36 consecutive monthly payments of $27,777.78 per month beginning <coughs> January 15, 2014 and ending on December 15, 2016. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of Item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare Item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>